Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Critical Podcast. My name is Jimmy Kidd, and I am your host, and joining me, as always, are my go-to podcast compadres, Mr. Joe Lever. Hello, Jimmy. Good evening. Yes, and Mr. Levi Fletcher returning. Levi, how are you? What up, guys? Look, he's back. Levi, what's what's going on with you, man? Tell tell people what, where have you been? What's what's What you been doing? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. And you're digging it? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen him in three months. He's like, it was wow. And I'm like yeah. shaking and like getting withdrawals. Yeah. He's like, I need to get back. <laughs> I need to get withdrawals. I got to get ready to raid Anixia, right? Yeah. I nailed it. I'm so good at this game. Anyway, thanks, boys, for joining us. Uh, and everybody who's watching out there, we like to talk about movies. Video games, TV shows, music, entertainment, theme parks of all sorts and sizes. Mostly just the big ones, though. But this week, we just want to talk about kind of a few specific things. Two trailers dropped. I feel like we need to talk about them. First and foremost, the one we all love and we're so excited about, James Bond or No Time to Die. Is that, mm-hmm. is that, the, is that, is that the name? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the name of the movie? Yeah, that's the name of the movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to briefly touch on it. We don't have to stay here long. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more so about how you feel about the kind of the former Bond films, because I think we could do a whole show on that. But I guess for me, I haven't really felt a connection to this series. It kind of feels a little bit all over the place. And Daniel Craig, they got him back, which is great. And this movie, I think it looks sharp. But I guess maybe since the new superhero stuff, I haven't really felt like I needed James Bond as much. I don't know. Like, Levi, you're, you're back now. What do you think? Do you care at all about new James Bond or the old kind of series at all? Uh, I've never really, I don't know if I've ever seen a James Bond film. What? You have? We saw Casino Royale together, I thought. Mm-mm. No? That was that was Mukwe, yeah. Was it? Oh, it could have been. Uh, No, I, I don't think I've ever seen one. Am I missing something? Because I also did that with Mission Impossible, and then that was a big mistake. So. It hurts my heart so much, Uh, but I got you into Mission Impossible. And now I love it, yeah. Mission Impossible's different, though. Mission Impossible's just gotten better with time. So you kind of have no care about this at all. No, not really. I mean, I know that they exist. I know that you know it's been a, <laughs> I know it's been a recurring thing. It's like the new Modern Warfare, the new James Bond film. <laughs> I guess. Sorry, shade on you, Joe. Um, <laughs> no, just kidding. Actually, I have questions about that game for you. Anyway, uh, no, I I just know it's kind of a it's kind of a tradition right it's an annual thing almost or no, it's not every annual. couple years so they kind of were like it was in limbo if they were going to make another one with this james bond so that's where i don't know it's been a few years is this their 20th installment 25th they've made 30th? a lot of bond movies though you're right mm-hmm. i don't know they've made a lot but it's been since like the 60s so they've had a few years in between so you don't really care uh not really i mean if if i'm missing something tell me because obviously i was missing something with mission impossible and i regretted it but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Joe, for you, Bond, where where do you stand? Uh, 007 is always at a bit of a special place in my heart. I think it's, uh, you know, it has its own lane and it stays in it and it's successful for that. Yeah. Um, you know, originally they started out semi-serious, but, you know, there's goofiness to them where you're like, you know, somewhat implausible. I, it's almost kind of Mission Impossible X-esque. Um esque don't they're not the same i know this is waiting for you uh but i don't know i've always enjoyed them sometimes some of the ones with like pierce brosnan they started to get a little too like hokey ridiculous for me uh, like the best almost ones. like laughable oh, so um, good sometimes i i like pierce brosnan but there was a period in there where they kind of made him slightly laughable um but did you ever watch the 60s ones joe where it started. Yeah, I mean, I've cut those are corny parts of them. Where he yeah, throws them in the bathtub, corny. throws in like the thing with them, and he they get like electrocuted. He's like shocking. Like that's where it started. Yeah, baby. yeah, like, Sean Connery. I love that. Um, that's the corny baby. That's the corny yeah. Bond. But you know, as of recently, I think they've taken themselves really seriously. Very I mean, much so. yeah, and I didn't like uh, which one was it? It was the Casino Royale. I wasn't a super fan of that one. Oh, really? Um, but. Let's talk about this one. This trailer kind of did it for me. I liked it. I think it felt a lot more uh, in line like the Mission Impossible movies. And sure. I think that's a good thing. Obviously, Mission Impossible did good stuff, and they did really well. And people like that. Uh, that that 
title. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, that franchise. Yeah, that franchise, that's the word. But I... I don't know. I, I, the thing about this one that really kind of caught my eye was it's got a lot of action. I mean, I think they showed off like eight, nine, ten, ten or so action sequences that seemed pretty awesome. Yeah. Did they movie. show all of them though? Is the question. Yeah, good point. But, uh, regardless, it seemed really intense, kind of fast moving, fast pace. Um, you know, I like the fact that there seems to be a bit of, uh, 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 what's the word like a, a dimension of love to it um, yeah that's what casino royale had too did you not like it you know like that i can't even remember it <laughs> that's where he has like the girlfriend who dies which is the one with adele uh, that skyfall? that's skyfall <laughs> skyfall it's a skyfall maybe that's the one i didn't like what was the one where he ended in a cabin out in the woods or something that's like skyfall that? yeah okay then that I one's home alone dude it's got the little like he's setting up little yeah. traps and stuff i didn't like that one as much but uh how about the so mini guns that up. are in the aston martin like the mini guns yeah that come out of the I, I love that kind of thing that's kind of that's like old great. school james bond it's yeah. not too corny or anything what and it's how is that not cool corny moment. mini guns coming out of the headlights that's pretty corny <laughs> <laughs> and he spins around and shoots everybody i'm surprised he wasn't like it's time to spin up or just spin around. Uh, well, i don't know either way um i think this one looks pretty insane i i kind of admired it as i was looking at all the action sequences and sure. stuff and and the uh the transitions to different areas or environments locales there you go um i i kind of thought that looked really good but daniel craig is james bond i've never really had any qualms with it i thought it's i thought he's always done a very good job and uh plays the part well so I'm actually pretty excited for it. I think it's going to be a good one, probably better than previous years. So I've always enjoyed them enough that they're worth going to see in theaters. I'll probably go see it. Okay. So hypometer, I'll call it a good eight. All right. Levi, how about you? Out of 10, where where do you feel for someone who who did not know this movie was coming out? (laughs) Like a, I don't know, like a five? Sure. I nothing i don't know that's fine that's okay <laughs> i mean it's cool like it's, it's like a thing it's just like when i see like a new assassin's creed or something like, oh neat it's coming but oh like the like the games not the movies yeah sure yeah yeah no i'm waiting for that sequel baby There's... gotta get that sequel yeah michael <laughs> michael fassbender where is it yeah i don't know uh i'll probably be at like a six myself i i want to like bond more but i like when it gets corny and i feel like they're finally leaning into that more with like dr no who's in this one i feel like in blofeld um or field i don't know how you say it but i think lean into the gadgets more have some fun it's so serious it's like it's just so serious and that's fine if you can pull it off but uh i don't know i guess maybe mission impossible fills it for me and maybe it's like an american thing like i kind of ethan hunt has always been like my super spy and he's been consistent throughout time so i feel like i have more of a connection to him because with the bond stuff like You've had Daniel Craig. I liked Pierce Brosnan growing up, and I thought those movies were crazy. I like the Sean Connery ones way, way back. But it's just like you kind of pick your favorite Bond mm-hmm. and kind of stick with them. But I feel like they're all kind of goofy, like even when they try to be serious. Uh, so I'm not sure. I don't know if I'll see this in theaters. I didn't see the last one in theaters, and this is the fourth one. It was Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, and this one. Was there one in between? Spectre. Oh, Spectre was in between Skyfall and this one. There oh we go. yeah yeah that yeah. one <laughs> so wait maybe specter was the one where they ended in a, sh- in a cabin no that was skyfall i think yeah yeah because yeah, specter... yeah, i don't even think i've yeah. seen the yeah. most recent one yeah I don't think uh, I saw specter. does they specter have, have something to do with some uh uh shadow some organization mining place out in the desert or something yes yes and there's that chat that's where christoph waltz levi comes in as uh blowfield or whatever and i think they you spoiler alert i think maggie Sm- not maggie smith uh Judy Dench dies in Skyfall, and then you get a new M in Spectre, and that's Ray Fiennes who played Voldemort. So he's the one who's like, "Where's 007? And the, 007's always hanging out like at an island, you know? What I, like in the beginning of these movies, it's just like, yeah, he's at an island paradise. He's kind of, he's kind of done. He's kind of done with the whole thing, and they're like, we gotta get him back. And it's like, oh, okay, he's coming back. So I remember the one yeah. with the uh, bad guy that. Uh, the same bad guy that played uh, Captain Salazar from the latest Pirates of the Caribbean. Remember? And he had like the messed up face. That was Skyfall, I think. Okay, so That's I have the seen them all, I think. Maybe. Maybe it was a yeah. Skyfall? I think it was. Anyway, but yeah, so there you go. Bond, no time to die. I'm gonna... I 
probably wrong already. I feel like I'm going to be so wrong trying to remember that. Like, no time to... Oh, no, and no. how dare they at the end, they end it with him turning the corner in a hallway and shooting towards it, but it just goes black. It doesn't do the... Well, they, they're trying... See? That's the corny... Joe, you like the corny stuff. That's so corny. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of... Gritty realism. I don't realism. know that it's corny. I think that's just a signatory move for 007. Like, that's their marketing, and I think why go away from that? I mean, it's recognizable. It's beautiful. Because they're trying to be realistic like you wanted. And they can't do that. At the end, they got to end the trailer with a bang. Just bang. No. Well, I disagree. All right, whatever. That's, that's like, I'm just saying that's if you wanted that thing where it's like a person and then it's like, and then it cuts to a setting and it's like the credits. It's like. Do you get nervous out. about seeing like all those action moments in the trailers and then you're kind of like anticipating it in the movie like oh is that gonna come up is that gonna come up because that was me during a mission impossible i was like oh where's that scene and... <sighs> jody wait me yeah sorry this is for you i'm we're throwing it at you hey you said you're excited about all the action sequences so are you like if you see the, them all in the trailer will you be able to forget them when it's oh yeah up? i mean i've already half forgotten about them <laughs> <laughs> i mean can tell he left an impression, right? I don't think there are many trailers where I remember everything that happened throughout it, but uh, oh gosh, in I the would... moment, in the heat of the moment, it, it just, it looked oh good. Oh boy, I, I could really... quote like the entire like Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets trailer. Like, I wish I had that ignorance because I wish so badly I could go in and not remember these stupid tra- I'll be like, trailers in my head. Uh, speaking of other trailers though, let's move on from Bond to uh, Black Widow, which is a movie that people have really wanted for a long time. And we're finally seeing it. Uh, it was like a two and a half minute trailer. And yeah, uh, just for context for people, if you haven't seen it yet, you should probably go watch that. But it, it happens after Captain America Civil War and before the events of Infinity War. So it has been confirmed that, believe it or not, even though you've all already seen it and you all think he's dead, Robert Downey Jr. is coming back, baby. Uh, he's not in the trailer, but it's been confirmed that I believe Tony Stark will reappear in some facet or another. Because right now, at this point, I think Robert Downey Jr. could walk on set and they'd have to pay him $10 million. Like, he wouldn't even have to do anything. Uh-huh. He'd just walk in and be like... I'm here, and they're like, here's your money. I'm sure he's got a cameo of sorts coming up. Yeah, I'm well, sure. So what, they're jumping back in time before the events of uh, Infinity, Infinity, War. Infinity War? Yeah, to tell a smaller story, which makes sense, because like, if you have... It would be hard for them to tell, I think, a really compelling spy thriller in the aftermath of Infinity War and in between where Endgame... Like, like would you have her be in like, this sad, desperate world? Like, you're just kind of like, eh. So I think it's smarter, but they're not going all the way back, which is great. So I'm happy about that. They just kind of used the reused, uh, recycled footage from Age of Ultron, where it kind of shows the red room and all of that. And I was like, okay, good. So we're not going all the way back to like little girl Natasha, probably going into the red room and like learning. To oh, there'll be a flashback for sure. Yeah, well, they've already showed it, so maybe they don't have to do that at all. So maybe it can just be a self-contained story in that kind of portion of time. Which I think is exciting, and it's interesting because you can kind of you could bring in other heroes then potentially if you wanted to as well. Captain America. That's all I'm trying to say. It'd just be nice. I, they probably won't do it, but maybe they will. So they're gonna they have could. prequel elements, but then also current, I guess current in that timeline elements too, yes. right? Yep. So that's, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So again, pre Infinity War before it gets crazy. Plus, it's Black Widow, so I think a spy movie makes more sense where you can kind of place it in a quiet well, her pre-shield thing. origins too right like where she first starts or are they, they not going to delve i don't know if the, how much they're going to delve into that stuff i'm mm-hmm. not sure maybe maybe like right when she decides to defect from russia to the united states it sounds like that might be in there that's because we see a de-aged version of general ross do you guys remember there's that scene where it shows um uh i can't think of john hurt something something like that where it shows like a guy he's like military guy with the mustache and there's kind of these freight containers and things so it might be her saying like you know i don't want to work for russia anymore i'm going to defect to the united states so maybe that portion of time will be the flashback and then it'll be that period in between civil war and infinity war that this movie is going to be plopped right into place which i think is fine and again if you're bringing robert downey jr back i understand how people get frustrated now because it kind of shortcuts or i should say that it kind of um it kind of sweeps the leg out from underneath of the the impact of Endgame. But at the same time, when you come back to these movies and if you want to watch them in chronological order, it's kind of nice to have him there. And it's just another draw to a movie that maybe they're worried. Not that they wouldn't pr- like do well, 
but it just helps a movie like this no matter what if you're like yeah he's gonna be in it like captain america civil war completely benefited from him being in that movie uh but yeah i want to talk to you guys about and get your opinions because i don't want to just go about all mine or just tell about all the history stuff so again uh well, actually we'll start with joe this time joe black widow how are you feeling about the trailer um i don't know is it bad that i'm not very interested to go back in time dude say it be honest yeah i mean get critical that's what we do here yeah he said I mean, it. she's dead anyway why should i care now <laughs> <laughs> she served Jesus, her purpose. spoiler <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, she served her purpose. That's the, what a good way to put it. So, you, so Joe, you're just not interested Jesus because Christ. it's not taking place in like the the present of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, like I'm looking for progression in the universe, sure. not necessarily going back to see a story that you know technically should have been told maybe as she was getting involved with the Avengers. Sure. I, you know, like all the others, I guess, uh, you know, expectations are that. But, I mean, is it such a bad thing to go back and get her entire story and know more about her? No. But did I, you know, if I was given the choice, okay, A, B, C, or D, you want a new film after that? You want this? You want a second one of these? Or do you want to go back and see Black Widow and how she came to be? Okay, I'm well, definitely let's, not picking that one. How about the context of if it, it has to be Black Widow? Is there anything in here that interests you? Because you can't really do present day or future with her. No, not not really. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. Not really. That's all right. Levi, how about you? Anything? Or are you still? Are you with Joe? Or are you kind of like eh, whatever? Yeah, we talked about this at lunch yesterday. Um, I'm just not getting the same. I'm getting the same kind of feelings that I got for Captain Marvel, which was. Meh. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just a meh. Um. Nothing and, in there. No taskmaster not doing it for you. Well, it's just I I just feel like this could have been maybe relegated to a Disney Plus Ooh, show. Here we go. And well, that's not a bad thing. Hey, Disney Plus is that you know they're onto something. Mandalorian is fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, I just think that this could have been better done as a Disney Plus show, and maybe one of those characters, like Moon Knight or something else. Maybe introduce a new character now that we're we're there. So I get it. They're yeah. saving. They're going into phase four a little bit close to the chest still, but I wonder too if uh, you know would you want it to get like the Hawkeye treatment, like where it's kind of yeah. I think it. I think that it would have been okay giving her that. Sure. Um, she still would have got her recognition, and we, you know, would have been a show to throw on. And oh, cool, you get to learn a little bit more. But sure, is it necessary to have a movie? No. Yeah. Did they uh, need something to fill their pre-summer time slot? Yes. <laughs> maybe, yeah. No. Uh, I wonder, too, and this is maybe this is my insider crazy brain thinking here, but I wonder if, you know, when Scarlett Johansson got, they were talking about Endgame and all this stuff, and they're like, hey, here's the deal. You're going to kind of be like one of the emotional pillars and cores of this film, but you're not going to make it to the final battle. I wonder if at any point before that or at that point they said, like, but here's the conceit or the caveat. We're going to give you your own film because you haven't gotten it yet and you should have a long time ago and we're sorry that Captain Marvel beat you to the punch, but uh, we're doing it now and we're going to, you know, you're going to have the long hair and you got the different outfits and, you know, it'd be nice to hear a Russian accent. But uh, I wonder if that played a part in it at all or if they were just like, we just need to make this so that way people stop asking us to make a Black Widow film. I don't know. Yeah. Did don't a know. lot of people really ask for a Black Widow film? I think pre Endgame, yes. There was a lot of buzz yeah. like wanting a Black Widow film. And then after Endgame came out, I think it kind of quieted down. Sure. Well, there's been a lot since I think uh, the first Avengers or Iron Man 2. It was kind of like, oh, Black Widow's here, so we should do a Black Widow film. And they're kind of like, why haven't you made a Black Widow film? Why haven't you made a female led superhero film? And they're like, yeah. Gah, gah, gah. Uh, but I think now that they've got Captain Marvel and that was such a success, they're kind of like, all right, well let's do this one now it's gonna be superhero she's not gonna have any powers but we could make her kind of over the top still and we'll throw in david harbour who i think looks great as like the red guardian which is like a russian version of captain america but like kind of overweight and stuff so i <laughs> i'm excited about that i think that's fun you he know? doesn't have any powers either right he's just he, uh so, a beat him up 
normally they say that but like in the trailer he like kicks a door down like with his foot and it flies like a, a pretty good distance and Wait, who is he again he plays red guardian which is basically the russian i think it's red guardian the russian version of captain america back in the day after captain america kind of came on to the scene like every country tried to make their own version uh, of like a captain america with like a serum and stuff but most of them were people who did not have powers but Red Guardian usually doesn't, but they might have given him powers in this one, which would be even better, because, like, I don't know why I'm okay with him, but not Fat Thor. Like, you know what, I I, I don't know, something about a bigger David Harbour. Well, he, just being like, it's less of a, I feel like it's less of a tchotchke, like, less of a, less of a cheesy kind of thing yeah. that they're playing on. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was a gimmick, sorry, gimmick, not tchotchke. Yeah, oh, that's like, a really good way. Fat Thor was a gimmick, you know. David yeah. Harbour just being a big boy is not... You know? Yeah, well, and I like the thought of, like, you know, it's her sister, but it's I think it's just somebody she grew up with in the Red Room, and Rachel Weisz's character is there as well, which I think a lot of people are kind of hinting at that might, she might be the Taskmaster, which is fine. Uh, I I guess I just... I'm interested to see how that, like, little team works, and I, I think Black Widow, after Endgame, I thought she was much more compelling, and I don't know, I'm interested. And I'm what's interested. his deal? He's Marvel's... Deadpool or or not Deadpool? Oh, uh, Taskmaster, Deathstroke, or ah, yeah. so excellent question. We actually did a video about this guy a while ago, but uh, we actually pitted him against Deathstroke, so that's a good point, Levi. So basically, Taskmaster uh, usually in the comics was like this kind of mercenary for hire that he the way they kind of introduced him, he was like the headmaster of this school that basically cranked out villain cronies and thugs and stuff. So he was, it was like, where do all the thugs and villains, like, you know, come from? Or where do all the supervillains get all their little, like, minions? And this was, like, the place to get them, or kind of one of the places to get them. But Taskmaster is interesting because he has the ability, kind of like Sharingan, like Sasuke and Itachi, where he can, like, see something, and if he can physically replicate it himself, he can do it. So he has, like, the shield-throwing kind of styles of Captain America. He can shoot a bow like Hawkeye. You know, he's he has those things, so if he watches you once and he kind of survives a fight, he can kind of learn how you fight and predict what you're about to do. So... Kind of like I said, like early age Sharingan, which makes him interesting and a good combatant for against somebody like Black Widow if he watches you enough and then he's like, oh yeah, I know your trick, you know, you do this. So mm-hmm. that's the that's the conceit. But I wonder too, again, if it's going to just be Rachel Vice, like, because I didn't see anybody else there. Hope I don't know. I would like it to not be someone who's like part of her team that's like, actually, I betrayed you. You know, like I want Taskmaster to be his own thing because I kind of like Taskmaster. So yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm interested. And a lot of people were complaining about the outfit. Uh, like the skull mask wasn't good enough. I don't know. I think it looks fine. I don't get too wrapped up about these things. Usually once you see it in motion more, you can kind of, you know, decide for yourself. But yeah, I'm interested. And I'll just say hypometer right now. I'm going to put it at like 7.5. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little bit of a buck. I'm sorry. But he's interested. <laughs> I'm interested. Yeah, well, it's Marvel. And honestly, if Marvel can make Guardians work, you know, like, I always keep thinking, I go back to Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm like, if they made me love that, then I have, I, have, I don't know. We'll see. Joe, how about you? For someone who doesn't seem to care, uh, where are you? Uh, you know, I the thing is, is with Marvel's track record and knowing that it's going to be quality, budget, all the things are going to be there. Taskmaster being involved is a plus. Um yeah, I'll still give it a good seven and a half. Yes, all right, we're in the same like, spot. Like, it'd be worth seeing, I'm sure. Like, I wouldn't mind to see it. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, warm up the car and rush out. But, sure. um, you know, if if the opportunity arises, I'd give her a watch. Levi, how about you? What was that? Sorry. Uh, hypometer on this one. What are you feeling? Uh, hypometer. Uh, I'd say like, what did I give Captain Marvel? Like a seven. I'd say like a seven and a half. Okay, we're all there at seven and a half. And you guys both seemed very did you ever, uninterested. <laughs> did you ever... Well, I, I think, yeah, maybe I should have saved my conversation with you to yesterday That's to fine. today. But um, did we find out what we're getting this year again? It's Is it like... This and... What else? Is Doc, Doctor Strange's next year? Or 2021, I should say. Somebody look it Let up. Let me look it up. Fact yeah. checking. Uh... But anyway, so we're all at a 7.5, even though I, I gave it a few. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll, I thought you guys were going to be way lower. Honestly, I thought you were going to be like four. Be like, I don't even, eh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, seven and a half is a generous score. I just, I, I know it'll be good and all. I just, yeah, I'm not. It's like bookended said, though. So, you know, she's not going to die. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. Right. Which is I mean, 
I was just looking up Taskmaster stuff, and he looks pretty cool. He's really cool. Um, oh, we're getting the Eternals, which I'm actually very excited for. Uh, the Eternals and and what else? Is Black there? Widow. Black Widow and. When's Eternals um, coming out? November. Yeah, no, this year it's just two films: Black Widow in May, and then uh, November six is the Eternals. Yeah, that's usually where they test some of their more magical or more out there stuff. Is November because they're like and then. Next year we're getting four yeah. films. Four? Shang Chi is coming out February. Shang-Chi. Doctor Strange is coming out May. Okay. Un- Untitled Spider Man Far From Home sequel is tentatively scheduled July sixteenth. Okay. And then Thor Love and Thunder is November fifth. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Holy that, crap. That movie's gonna make so much money that Thor makes... Love and Thunder? People are gonna lose their minds for female Thor. I just I know it right ah. now. And it's it's fine. I'm not I'm not trying to say it one way or another. Annie. Like, <laughs> I, I I know it's gonna happen. I hope Pat you know what? I almost called her Padme. I hope <laughs> I, I just watched a bunch of Star Wars Annie. videos. Um uh I'm so sorry, I'm blanking I'm blanking on her name here. I'm a horrible I messed person. you up. Natalie kidding? Portman. Natalie Portman. I hope Natalie Portman's excited about it because it sounded like she was kinda done with Marvel, but now she's back, so I hope that she's like raring to go i feel like she should be on yeah. cigarettes or something like smoke a natalie portman today like, <laughs> like, oh like oh i get it i was like what are you talking about like, like she's gonna completely let herself go and then become <laughs> thor that's what i would do if i were her. oh god uh, but uh yeah good for her i hope all those movies are great and i'm sure they will be uh but anyway let's move into something you know levi and i decided the other day be fun Let's just go out and be some of the just regular folks. We'll head out on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock and go see a movie. Nobody will be there, right? Well, of course, around here, they decided to let off school for Thanksgiving break, like, an extra two days or something. So, in and amongst a theater full of children. Uh, <laughs> a lot of kids there. It wasn't too bad. It was fine. Uh, we Could saw, have been worse. We saw Frozen 2. Uh, more Frozen. Get frozen dirt. Uh, and Levi is going to briefly give us a spoiler-free plot synopsis, aren't you, Levi? Spoiler-free. Uh, Elsa becomes a schizophrenic and starts hearing uh, <laughs> voices. Oh my god, did the... you make that up? That's so good. <laughs> yeah. She's lost uh, her mind. This is all off the cuff. No, uh, Elsa became a schizophrenic, starts hearing voices from the woods, and uh, yep. sets out on an adventure to figure out if they're squirrels or what the hell they are. Perfect. And without giving away any spoilers yet, what did you think of it? Uh, I mean, it was charming. Um, I think the songs were well done. Maybe not as memorable as the first one. Okay. Uh, obviously, you can't top some of those bangers. Yeah, it's um, hard. But, uh, no, I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any favorite like... moments that, like, or favorite yeah. aspects, I should say? I, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a, there's a, Kristoff finally gets his own song in this one. Nice. And it's a, it's a beautiful boy band throwback. A little love that. ballad action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, for me, I, I would say if you like the first one, obviously. You're going to see it. You probably already saw it. And this came out like a week and a half ago or something. So already, by the time you're hearing this, like two weeks ago. But uh, animation, by the way, it's just, oh my goodness. It looks so flipping good. Like, I, mm-hmm. I think, you know, Joe, I know you're not necessarily into these types of things, but the, the level of detail on the textures of just even the clothing is ridiculous. Like, I'm just sitting there admiring this while they're talking to each other. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, look at this. Like, she gets a horse so at one good. point, and the mane oh, is just, like, man. flowing water, and it's, it's like, so holy cool. crap. Spoiler, it's good. But it's fine. Uh, it's okay. But anyway, uh, I gotta say this, too. I thought they were gonna, and I thought, man, I'm so impressed that they didn't do this. I thought for sure they were gonna overplay Olaf, the little snowman. I thought for sure, because usually what happens in a movie like this, it's kind of like the first Pirates of the Caribbean. I was telling this to leave, I was like, you get your... You, captain jack and then in the next movies you're like man people love captain jack so it better be like 80 percent captain jack or 90 percent. and i thought oh man they're just gonna just do too much olaf they held back so much on olaf and i was so happy and they gave him not only a great song but he had some of the funniest stuff in this movie but he would say it like just kind of in the background like he would just kind of like say something really sad or really weird and it was like 
I was legitimately laughing out loud at some of the stuff he was saying. I was like, oh my gosh. So It's funny it being an adult good. and being like, oh my god, they said that? Like, oh, oh it's the sure. kids movie. Yeah, <laughs> and this movie uh, was so much darker than the first one, and mm-hmm. there's so much more. It, this one feels way more, as I told Levi, Broadway. It feels very, like, the songs feel like they're more impactful. They're more about, like, the emotions of the characters. And I think it's a much more, a, I should say mature not adult, but more mature story than the first Frozen, and they even have nods to it where the characters can kind of accept the fact that they were kind of immature in the last one, and now they've grown up, and they've learned, and it's it's really cool. It's uh, It was kind of a bold move for them, I thought, to, to make it not like all kind of happy-go-lucky the whole time. Not that the first one is, but this one is very, not only visually dark, but just like the, the, the themes of death and loneliness and trying to move on and like man it's just they tackle a lot of things and i was i was impressed by that but does it supersede the first one i don't know it's just a continuation of it so i can't really say it's like better or worse than the first frozen so i gotta agree with you though i think josh gad really knows how to handle that character well yes um and i it's not that i dislike Kristoff, but i feel like he's just there yeah like he's he's fine but Sven obviously steals, like, their plot, sure. you know? like Yeah, he's just kind of, yeah. Also, yeah. I respect the fact that they once again did a, an unconventional villain, which I thought was good, too. But anyway. You know what bugs me a little bit is they, they kind of underplayed Elsa's magic. You don't really get to see her do a ton of, like, really cool magic what? things. Yeah, she does. Well, kidding? I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm thinking back on it. It's like I, I wanted to see some, like, bigger, like, maybe cooler, like, maybe fighting with her in her magic, but she doesn't, you know. There's no one who can best. She uses it more as like a utility, I guess. Yeah, she's utility. She's utility based. All right, should we flip the spoiler switch? Sure. All right, I'm flipping it. (laughs) Okay, so yes, Elsa, she becomes a A lesbian, a god. No, she becomes. (laughs) She's a super spirit, and she's got all the powers. No, Uh, we didn't really talk about this in the little bit we just talked about, but. How, the different there's the four different elements that you have you have got your earth your fire your wind and your water wind is like a couple of leaves or just the idea of air kind of swishing around so i was like eh, it's not that great fire was great because it kind of moves around too fast and later on you find out it's a little salamander and you're like oh it's a cute little salamander and he is adorable he's got a fun little like hot and cold relationship with olaf as you get you see fire and snow uh the earth was weird because it was multiple earth giants i guess I don't know. And then the last one, which Levi kind of alluded to earlier, was the the horse for water, and it's like a literal horse made out of water, and it's such a fascinating and beautiful character that you could just kind of get mesmerized by. And uh, Elsa kind of is the bridge between worlds eventually for them. And I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is neat, because I kind of thought that's what she was going to be, was like the... She's like, yeah, I'm not going to really be the queen anymore. I'm just going to be the protector of the forest, and I'm like one of the spirits, but not... Like, she can't really be held back, you know, just to be, like, a regular person anymore. But one of the things you said, Levi, because you wanted to see her do more cool stuff, like, fighting-wise, she uses it more for, like, the utility of water having memory. So she kind of does, like, the ice, and it makes, like, the frozen projections of old memories. Like, we're kind of seeing that in video games a little bit more now. And I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Like, that she can kind of, like, tell mm-hmm. a story by kind of freezing where water was at a time. I guess so yeah yeah um and the unconventional villain being like the the past basically and the fighting that like pers- or ensued I thought that the, the captain of the guard was going to be the bad guy I thought for sure he was going to be the bad guy but then he wasn't and I was like oh thank goodness I was like please don't do it Disney not again um yeah I honestly did um you know I joke about it but I honestly did read some articles that people were like wondering why Disney didn't use this as a uh a tool to actually like maybe finally make a first gay character, you know, because a lot of people were actually pissed off that like Elsa didn't really lean into that. It's like not saying that she is, but a lot of people are, they kind of allude to it a lot, you know, when do they in this movie, you think? Yeah. Like I, I think maybe it's just like tendencies, but like, I, this is just what I've read is a lot of people are like, why didn't they just let it like go with that story and, and finally make a, a big gay character, you know, they could have, but. Well, does she even need to have a romantic relationship with anybody? I think that's kind of the thing no, about her. It's like but... she doesn't, like, I think if they're going to do it, it needs to be natural. Like, it can't be mm-hmm. forced, right? Like, yeah. I think I think just Elsa, because she was so popular, people wanted her to be that, even if mm-hmm. she wasn't necessarily. She hasn't really shown an interest, really, in anyone 
really. She's always just kind of been like, everybody stay away from me. <laughs> I don't like people. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I still, I think this movie's still like at least an eight, eight and eight point five. I don't know how you feel about Levi. Like, I thought, it was, I thought it was good. Uh, I give it like an eight. Yeah. Yeah. The music wasn't as memorable, but I think it has better, uh, better feel to it. You know. I did. Uh, yeah, not as memorable, but I almost feel like the music maybe is better in a way. Like it was, it was. It was less cheesy. Yeah. Well, like, and yeah. We were talking more about that meaningful. One yeah. of those songs, um, I think it's like the second song where uh, Anna and Olaf are together and they're kind of running mm-hmm. around and there's like the underlying like song or melody of Love is an Open Door kind of built or baked into it. And I was like, wow, this is really, it's complex. It's really cool how they kind of pulled that song, I think, from the first one. It felt that way anyway. And I really love Olaf's song about all of this will make sense when I'm older. Like, all these things, like the forest and all the spirits, like all the fires happening and the wind and the rocks and stuff, and he's like, this this will make sense eventually. Like, he's just like, I've become more mature, and I am, you know, I just, I'll understand all this when I'm older, but uh, I thought that was a funny, like, not necessarily, like, a truthful song. I think that's really Mm -hmm. good, too. But, yeah, uh, and Kristoff's song about, he's, like, in a boy band with his reindeer and stuff. That was, uh, that was very funny. I'm sure they had a good time putting that together because it seemed like a very fun song so yeah yeah um but also uh i gotta give it to kristen wig who plays anna she did a really good job of kind of not just being the fun person the whole time she really can really act uh just with her voice alone and i think it really comes through especially kind of near the end where she is like alone and isolated and she's like I gotta, what am I gonna do now? Everybody I love is dead. Like, kind of, she thinks, you know, it's like, it's rough. It's rough. Uh, I will say when Olaf was perishing for that moment, it was very much a Avengers Infinity War, like, I don't feel so good. Like, he's kind of flurrying away, and I just want to be like, I almost leaned over to you and be like, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Like, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was good, though. I thought it was really a solid film, and I would like to see a Frozen 3. I'm still waiting for that mashup between them, Tangled, Moana. I want to make it needs to happen man just so good uh joe did you ever see the first frozen or did you just never have you never really gotten into those at all no okay oh we're gonna get you there one day joe you'll appreciate it not to be rude or anything but i got nothing for you guys that's okay don't worry about it it's that's all right we still love what this is brand new information (laughs) <laughs> he's got Disney Plus now, so he's gonna get right on it, and he's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, I love Tangled." Uh, <laughs> oh, you said Kristen Wiig. You meant Kristen Bell. I did mean Kristen Bell. I was trying to see if anyone was paying attention. Veronica Mars, damn it! I was right. I mean, you were right. I was wrong. Wig is from Saturday Night Live. And Ghostbusters. I'm sorry. Too, I'm the, sorry the, I meant Kristen Bell. The I female actually, Ghostbusters. I actually really like Kristen Bell. She's really good. Also in a good place. She's. She's a really good actor. I, I'm so sorry I screwed up on the name. There's so many names. Uh, anyway, but yeah, it's a little Frozen 2 thing. Now, let's move into that segment of the show that I like to call, that Lee likes to call, that Joe likes to call, we all like to call, somebody hit me with a baby. Time killer. That's right, it's time for the games we've been playing, the movies we've been viewing, the TV shows we've been watching. Uh, jo- Joe, you've been quiet for a while, so what have you been killing time with? <laughs> uh, what have I been killing time with? As of late. You might know better than I do, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty. Lots of Call of Duty. Lots uh, of Call of Duty. Yeah, Modern Warfare has been more fun lately. They've they entered in, of course, their money making scheme, which is the store. Um, you know, buying like weapon blueprints and and skins and new operators and stuff like that. I will say this game being so realistic like it's night and day different from like black ops blackout and all that um like when you play this game and you saw jimmy when you visited the detail is second to none as far as a shooter goes like it's legit real as can be um they keep that consistency with all these cosmetic items and things like that the the um spray spray paint for your guns or the camos you can get are realistic looking but still sexy enough to be tantalizing you know you want to buy them you want to have them like one has like a tiger type pattern with a tiger face spray painted on the side or i've seen a wolf um it's cool it really is uh some of the operators are pretty badass Uh, obviously this is a realism thing so you're not getting anybody with some weird crazy colorful outfit or anything weird 
but you're getting like uh, ghillie suits and and just cool clothing and cool looking operators, which is it's fun. Um, Ground War for the longest time was all I, all I was playing on here. Fun in its own right, you know, giant map, lots of people, kind of battlefield style. Mm -hmm. um, but I recently, with Drew and Haley, started getting into like the team deathmatch or the the domination or um, uh, what was the one where you deliver the bomb to the points? I forget what that was. Anywho, they're fun. Tight maps, points. Uh, I love the fact that you can mount on things. Like you can lean up against a door frame. I and thought you hated steady that. Steady shoot. No, I've really grown accustomed to it. And uh, using cover is the most important thing in this game, flat out. Um, kind of being cool, calculated, that sort of thing. Not just running into hellfire and spraying bullets, you know. Um, You've 180 since the other week when you were like, I hate this yeah, camp. And well, well, it was it was hard because it really is a play style adjustment when you're going from Call of Duty Blackout or Black Ops to this. Um, but I've enjoyed it. It is a good change of pace. I went back tonight and I played a couple rounds of Blackout and I just realized like, as much as I still like it, it is funny how you lose that, that crispness on the joysticks when you're away from it for a minute. And playing a different game, a similar style. Um, How about the Irishman? Yeah, the Irishman. I gotta get uh, you out of the Call of Duty hole because if I don't, we'll be a, here for twenty minutes. <laughs> uh, three plus hours long of uh, mobster stuff. <laughs> um, basically, the mob mm -hmm. over in. Uh, I, I guess New York area and uh, jumps kind of back and forth from uh, I think Pennsylvania mm -hmm. back down to Florida and such. I don't know. It's interesting. I, I'm trying to remember all the characters' names. Obviously, you got Al Pacino in there. You've got uh, Robert De Niro. Um, who else did you have in there, Jimmy? Name him for me. Uh, me Ray Romano. Ray Romano Anna plays Pac a lawyer Man. for the mob in there. Um, I heard Anna Pac Who's the other big name in there? Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Oh, I haven't dude. seen this movie. Uh. It okay. So my overall feel of it is it's excellent. If you can spare the time or you want to sit down and watch it in two sittings, it really is great. It's not insanely fast moving. Um, a lot of dialogue and things and transitions, but it it truly is interesting. And if you follow along really well with the story and what's going on, it's uh, it's great, it really is really high quality movie. Obviously, the acting is is high level as you can get. Um, I really enjoy Joe Pesci in this, but I can't say I like him more than the others. I mean, held De Niro and uh, and uh, Al Pacino were excellent as well. Al Pacino plays. Uh, a president of the of the uh, union, and uh, the union acts as kind of a bank for the mob, you know. Um, so there's money changing hands there. So the mob backs the union, backs Al Pacino's character, who I try to remember. I mean, this is historically accurate for the most part. I'm trying to think of the name of that character or who he was portraying. Um, well-known name but anywho the mob eventually turns on him because they don't really like what he's doing um after his jail time he comes back and he wants to be president of the union again and he stands in a decent spot to do that but the mob kind of turns on him and doesn't back him so they eventually end up uh putting him making him sleep with the fishes ah i see so what do you give it out of 10 if you had to give it a score um or is it more of a feeling like midsummer's night you know? yeah you know if you really have time to sit down and watch it and enjoy it like i did i would give it a strong mm, semi-strong there, there's not one problem with this movie i mean it's a 10 oh my gosh it's a 10 yeah yeah all right well now i gotta watch it if you give it a 10 
Yeah, I mean, it's not in that I enjoyed it that much. It's just I have nothing <laughs> bad to say about it. This is like a quality rating, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, And really, there's nothing bad you can say about it. It's excellent. The acting is excellent. I wouldn't change one thing. It's based on a historically act. It's historically accurate, accurate based on a story um, or history. I mean, and um, I really thought it was well done. Sure, cool. Really well done. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll check it out then. Uh, and that's on Netflix, correct? It is correct. Good to know. I've not been using that for much. I believe since. a Netflix original. So. Disney Plus. Uh, Levi, how about you, man? Besides Frozen Two, you've been killing time with anything else other than that a little World of Warcraft ish. Uh. Yeah, playing World of Warcraft. Uh, I tried just a tad bit of Outer Worlds, um, and it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the frame rate was a little too jarring for me, so I didn't really quite get into it. Um, I know that sounds very petty, but... Hey, man, just... no, that's a huge thing. Uh, started Jedi Fallen Order, a little bit of that. Um, and? Yeah, I like it a lot. I mean, you know I'm a fan of Dark Souls, so it's it's natural fit for me uh the graphics look awesome and it feels it feels like the best star wars game we've gotten on excuse me it feels like the best star wars game we've received in a long time yeah mm -hmm. is that a fair assessment i think so too yeah well yeah it's respawn in respawn we trust yeah <laughs> they're good people. uh jake we love you why, why um, won't he be on the show i'm um, sorry uh he said something about peasants i don't know oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going out there uh, the fame's going to his head um uh, what else have I been doing? I've been watching some Nat Geo stuff on Disney Plus. Oh, uh, about the dogs. Yep, dogs. Uh, that's so Raven. Love that show. It's the future. Um, she can see. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else have I been doing? Yeah, that's about it. Cool. Nice. Yep. Uh, for me, as far as watching, I watched. It just premiered yesterday, I think. But it's called One Day. It's another. Uh, I think it's a series on Disney Plus, and it is kind of showing different facets and functions of the company from all levels uh, just for a couple minutes at a time. So, for instance, you got to see a little bit of what it's like to be, like, one of the train conductors over at Disneyland and this guy's journey from, like, when he was young and up to, to this now. And you get to see uh, this performer, this actor who plays Rafiki in the uh, in Spain on the for the Lion King, like the stage show. And Bob Iger is kind of sprinkled throughout the CEO, which is funny because I'm just finishing up his book. So when he's like telling these stories and they're kind of talking about him on this, it feels kind of redundant where I'm like, Bob's he's got all these stories, but I feel like I know them all now. So I'll be like, yeah, Bob, I know the stories. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was really fascinating and I'm interested to see more of it. And they actually had uh, a bunch of stuff. So if you kind of get tired of one story it moves pretty quickly onto the next one and like i said from all facets talking star wars marvel pixar all that's in there too just like one person's perspective of that and one of the animators who's been there for a long time and oddly enough couldn't get a job way back in the day because he wasn't good enough and then ended up getting uh, the job there and this is the story i forget his name but he was the guy who animated the genie and he basically animated a few of robin williams kind of sketch acts and they showed it to robin williams and he was like well one of the you know greatest accomplishments of my life was getting to make robin williams laugh and it was kind of one of the reasons robin actually agreed to be in aladdin because he saw his he saw like the genie and then he saw him saying you know robin's words in one of his performances and i was like wow like that must be a cool accomplishment to be like yeah i'm the guy who kind of not only brought in robin williams but like had a big impact on that and i thought that was that's fascinating stuff so check it out you think out. disney waited for disney plus to kind of start pulling the veil a little bit maybe uh also i like that a lot of their documentaries do not necessarily hold back and talk about some of the bad stuff and some of the failures i really appreciate it and that's why that and the imagineering story i think are excellent examples of mm -hmm. the company saying like here's like the fun happy stuff but then also more so on the imaginary story of saying like this was a complete and utter failure mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had to scrap the idea i love it so because like youtubers can make these videos all day long right yeah but when the company itself is like yeah uh we all know this sucked and uh well we're yeah uh <laughs> if we made it better you know and it's also interesting for them to get like former ceos like michael eisner to come and actually sit down and talk about his tenure over the company 
it's really fascinating stuff. So I recommend you guys check out both One Day, The Imagineering Story, and then also, I think I talked about last week, but Waking Sleeping Beauty uh, is an interesting power struggle between some of the, the biggest people at Disney back in the day during the animation renaissance, like when um, The Little Mermaid and Aladdin and Lion King were coming up. It's really, really cool stuff. And I, I, I feel like such an old man. I'm listening to, like, books on tape, you know? I'm watching documentaries. <laughs> uh, it's like, but I'm like, ooh, another documentary. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm excited to see where this one goes. And I was watching this other one about Frank and Ollie, some of these old animators there, but it's it's a documentary from a while ago, so it doesn't look as good. I like a crisp, clean documentary, baby, that HD. Um, other than that, though, I want to talk about this briefly uh, because I was... I was given a review code, so I was really, I really appreciate it. But I had some issues trying to get back into uh, the the copy of it eventually. But I have been playing Darksiders Genesis, and it's a game that is just coming out. So by the time you guys hear this, it'll be out for maybe a couple of days. But it is a game featuring some of it's like my favorite, one of my favorite franchises, Darksiders. I've got a big, I got a big mat right here that's got death on it. Uh, but you play as War and Strife from the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and you get to basically go through. Um, and try to figure out what there's somebody who's been upsetting the balance as it always is uh, and you're kind of you work for this group called the charred council if you're unfamiliar and you're gonna go fight both heaven and potentially hell or vice versa and try to figure out what's going on but it's just kind of an isometric it looks like diablo but it's not diablo i need to make this out now or you it's said coming you it's coming out into it i got invited oh, okay. into it It was great so thank you nice. um but I'm still going to be critical in the review. But I got to say this. It feels just like an old Darksiders game, like one or two, just from that perspective. And I wanted to wait, too, because I want to play it with somebody else because it's the first time that there's co-op in one of these games. And that is so exciting to me. And War feels like he's ripped straight out of the first game. He's still kind of he's charging in, slamming people, stabbing people, like smashing heads. And, like, it feels so good. that He feels... Right, and I thought that in a game like this that's kind of focusing on Strife, the newest horseman, and he's got these two guns, the kind of ranged combat was going to be, oh, way stronger. But that's not necessarily the case. Uh, you have War who you can dash around kind of infinitely with him, so you, if you get good with him, and I'm not saying I have, I'm trying to, you can move around the battlefield so fast that people can't keep up with you. Like, you have a block and stuff, but I'm just like, whoop, 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 and I'm like, slice, 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 slice. Like, it's, ah, uh, mm, ah, it's so good. But... I know my friend, Johnny, he's going to play it with me, old Johnny, uh, and uh, he's probably going to play as War, so I've been trying to play as Strife a little bit, but I know I'll play through the game with him, and I'll probably be playing as, as Strife, which I will say this, I would think that the combat wouldn't be as, you know, uh, it's funny, he just texted me, um, it, I thought that the kind of the shooting wouldn't be as engaging as some of the melee combat because you know you kind of sit back and do that but there's there's stuff you throw like caltrops down and you can make like a clone of yourself and you're dashing away and shooting and you get these different ammo types that are really fun that you can kind of link together and the two that i like right now is i can shoot out this gravity shot that kind of makes a black hole and then i can use like this lightning thing so i kind of call it like my storm mage build where i'll, I'll shoot it out and i'll kind of pull these guys together and then i'll use the lightning on them even though the lightning kind of arcs anyway, so you don't need to pull them together. But still, it's great, and it's a lot of fun, and I'm really enjoying it. It feels like old times. If I will say this right now. It is better than Darksiders 3. There, I said it. I said it, and I'm not even done with the game yet. But I, I'm so stoked, and it looks so good, and it's by the the team that originally worked on Darksiders, but then moved on because THQ fell apart and then got reformed. They didn't really work on Darksiders 3 so much. They're working on Battle Chasers Night War, which is that kind of uh, turn-based game. But the the team over there, they know Darksiders. It's back in the hands of the people who like really have that true passion for it. It feels that way. There's a warmth and a love and a care there. And goodness gracious, it looks so good. And it also looks good because they do like these, for their cutscenes, it'll just be all like the characters standing in the room. But they'll bring up on the sides, like here and here, it'll be like a drawn version of War talking to a drawn version of Strife. And when they talk, their their picture will kind of come up and they'll kind of change. But it's so, it looks great. It plays really great. You should probably check it out if you're a Darksiders fan. That's all I'm trying to say. And also co-op, man. I'm so excited that it's co-op. We just need a game where it's all four of them. It doesn't like, steal oh. too much from Diablo. No, it's not like Diablo at all, though. Like, there's no, there's this creature core system where the more creatures you kill you get like their essence and like you can slot those into kind of this weird tree but it's not necessarily a skill tree so like depending if you use like it'll be they'll come in three different versions it'll basically the mana of the game which is wrath health or attack 
and if you slot something on there, so it's like an attack place, and you put something on there that's mana, you might get some stat boost, but it won't be as good. But if you put an attack thing where it's the attack, it'll like boost you even more, so like your stats will go up. But you can also just purchase upgrades for yourself with the in-game like souls that you get. So you can get all of War's old moves from Darksiders One, which includes this like the flip saw where you like you jump in the air and you like spin like a buzz saw down and just like crush people. It's so good, man. It's just fun. It's just it's just good being back, and I love it. And even though it's like a prequel to all the Darksiders stuff, I'm just I'm there for it. And I just want this team to keep making Darksiders games because there's it's so good. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do a full review on it. I just want to get more time, actually beat the game and play it with somebody else so I can like fully review it as opposed to just being like go I'll try it out. Right. It's dude, it's worth man. It's 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 good. So I'm I'm excited to hop back in. Anyway. That's going to do it for us this week, guys, because guess what? We didn't get any questions, uh, which is fine. Don't worry about it, everybody. It's oh, we got one. We, we got a question? What's your question? We got a question. Yeah. Oh, Levi, read us what, community feedback and questions. Let's do it. All right. This is from Missile Mage. Yes. Uh, I knew different entertainment mediums entertain us in different ways, even though they seem like they should be similar. From a personal standpoint, I attach most to characters and books. Then in video games, and then movies comes in last. But this... That isn't the same for everyone. I know you guys love your movies, so I'd assume you're different from me. What differences do you guys find personally based on what platform you experience something? Hmm? Oh, different. Oh, I, I like that. Um, different you know, team he says movies. books are his number one, and I would have to agree. I mean, I don't read a lot, but when I do, the what? one thing that's helpful it, or really aids in the experience is that it's up to your imagination. If you don't have a preconceived notion of you know what that character looks like from a movie or something, you can create that mental image yourself in the environments, the setting, etc. You can create that for yourself based on what you imagine as you read it, which I think is really cool. Um, so that medium really is top notch as far as in that regard. But uh, yeah, books. I mean, yeah, I. I guess I'm kind of not understanding his question. How did he end it? What was the overall? What differences do you guys find personally based on what platform you experience something in? I mean, I connect. Yeah, I guess I connect to things differently. Um, I mean, I guess for books, it's easier to conjure up like in, you know, your own take on something. Yeah. All about that imagination. Whereas the movie kind of more, you know, they're serving it up on a silver spoon. Easy yeah. peasy. Feed me, feed me. It's that instant gratification, and you don't really have to work. You just have to sit back and enjoy yeah. it. That's why you can be even more critical of it. I mean, and, I just uh, think of, like, Harry Potter and, like, how some things were so different on screen than how I envisioned them in my head. So that was yeah. interesting. I think books lead to entitlement. And here's why. I think no matter what, if they do a book to a movie, and this is not always the case, um, but you, no movie film director or whatever is ever going to live up to like the standard you have in your head of your imagination, I don't think. Except for, weirdly, the first two Harry Potter movies, weirdly you brought that up, Levi, because like, that stuff looked just the way I thought it would you know, when I finally saw yeah. it in a movie. Yeah. But I also agree that it's cool to make it up in your head because, like, you have a thought of, like, oh, this character looks this way. This character looks this way. And then when you see him, you're like, wait a sec, that doesn't look anything like... Who'd they you know, cast like, for that? What? Yeah, exactly. You get, like, frustrated. I get angry about, like, when they talk about video game castings, and I'm like, just don't do movies based on... <laughs> like, I'm just like, just... it's Don't do it based on any one, like, fictional character like that. But... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good. That's a good point. I like how we're getting to the. You mean you don't now. like Norman Reedus in Death Stranding? Uh, was Death Stranding a book? Is it a book? <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no. yeah, no. It should should be a book. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. Um, and maybe that's the thing too. Is like like Joe said though, if they do give it to you. So for instance, with like Mandalorian. Here's the Mandalorian. Here it is. You can be super critical of it because you can like look at it and you don't have to like spend time thinking, okay, so he got this new Beskar and he's making his shoulder pauldron. What is a pauldron? Okay, it's on the shoulder. Like, you know, they're like, here it is. It's right here. Do you want to judge it? Like, you know, I think that's why it's easier to review that kind of stuff and kind of pick it apart as opposed to a book where it's like it kind of is on you for fantasy to be like, well, did you not 
could you not comprehend the 10,000, you know, Urukai attacking at Helm's Deep? Well, here it is in a movie. <laughs> it's like, oh, the CG, you know, like, I, I don't know. That's a tricky question. Missile Mage is asking, he's asking good questions, as he always does. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes, too, I connect with certain characters, you know, better when I, when I just genuinely like a performance or just like a like a likable character so uh i try to think of something more recently um because i don't want it to all be the mandalorian because that'll just be it's too much uh but for instance like let's go i should say okay we're talking about frozen 2 olaf they could have i i think i connected with him more in this one because he he even said himself he like matured and I enjoyed how they took his character in a little bit of a different direction than I thought they would have. If I would just be reading the same lines in a book or a script from that, it might not come across because the I think the performance is so good. And that's what draws me to the characters, maybe, you know? Yeah. Because, like, you can picture the world's really cool in a book, but it's harder, I think, to, to feel the connection to the, to the character unless they specify what they're thinking. Which, by the way, I'll say that... Um, the Hunger Games does a way better job of that, where you can like read, like they tell you what Katniss is thinking constantly, but in the in the book or in the movie they can't really do that because they can't just be like in her head the oh, whole time. I had a really hard time reading the Hunter Hunger Books game uh, movie uh, books. I, <laughs> yeah, I had a really hard time reading those books. I had first. a hard time watching them. So <laughs> <laughs> I liked the movies. I like the first but... book. It's a real page turner. That one's that one's scary. It's like kids killing kids. It's rough. It's it's, good stuff. it's it's out there. Yeah, but I I understand all the points. I think Joe, you make a good point though too about like your imagination. I just wonder if that's I just I I'm just so sick of the whole like well it wasn't as good as the book. Well yeah you know it wasn't as good as the book. The book is like 500 pages long and they can't do that. They can't turn that into a screenplay yeah. as easily as you think. Yeah, so. but I, I'm thinking purely from the aspect that we talked about like character attachment. Sure. I mean what are you really going to get most attached to a character that you've made up in your own mind or a character on screen who, you know, uh, I got attached to Aragorn. I love that Aragorn so much. Well, I mean, sure. And some movies do it better than other others. Yeah. And that's a good example, but, uh, yeah. 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 I don't know if I care about, maybe I just have to read different books. I think it depends on the book, right? And the movie. Huh? Uh, I just love Danny Ocean so much in Ocean's Eleven. I'm like, I want him to steal all that money. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's kind of a bad guy. Uh, great question, Missile Mates. Thank you. Coming in at the 11th hour. I'm not surprised. Thank you. Levi, thank you for reading that off. If you guys ever, who are listening to this right now, just pause it for a second and just think of a question. Any little question will do. Perhaps pop culture and send it to me, to you. I'm trying to make it rhyme. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, all you have to do is tweet the hashtag critical podcast or put it in our discord and you can find us at go critical on Twitter or at me personally. I'm at Jimmy good zero one three. If you'd like to tweet something at Joe though, Joe at lever underscore six, two, seven, that's lever just like beaver only with an L where can they find you? Oh wait, you cut me off. Levi, where, where can they find you? on Twitter? I'm at Levu underscore beaver. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, change it. Now. I'm at, at, <laughs> at Levi Fletcher. At Levi Fletcher. And this week, I want you to send more Star Wars gifts to Joe. He got a good one last week. Yeah. I don't remember. Did I? Um, Joe did. I don't know. And also, this week's hashtag should be... Joe, what are you thinking? What do you want to... Do you wanna make a... mm. Just going to keep stroking my non-existent beard here. I'm just kidding. Indubitably. Um, it can't be indubitably. <laughs> no, Levi's back for the first time in a long while. It's his turn to pick the okay. hashtag. Fair enough. Levi, what do you want our, our podcast-specific hashtag to be this week so we know they made it to the end? Hashtag the Red Room. The, hashtag the Red Room. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I did not think you'd go to Black Widow, the show that I still, I still am surprised you guys gave a 7.5 out of excitement. And I'm... <laughs> I thought for sure you'd be. What did you give it? I gave it. I'm like I'm. You know I'm. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And you guys both like yeah, some boy. Yeah. Yeah. We're all gonna go see it together. We're all gonna be Black Widow fans. We're all gonna get the shirts singing Black Widow baby. It's gonna be so good. Um. (laughs) Anyway, thank you everybody for tuning into the show. If you guys want to support us, we do have a Patreon. We also do have a Spreadshirt and all that stuff. But just sharing us with a friend. Honestly, just share us or retweet us or whatever with somebody. I know it's hard. I know that asks a lot, but. If we can get 20 people to watch a show, maybe we can make 30 people watch it. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Uh, 
<laughs> oh goodness. Um. Anyway, Jimmy starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> I got big plans. Don't worry about it. It's all right, everybody. Uh. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, just remember to adapt and overcome. We did it. What was that? I dropped my cap right at the last <laughs> second.